Let's take a break from the theory and go experiential. All you have to do is sharpen your pencil and connect the dots. Choose three anchor points, not collinear. These three will be treated differently from all subsequent points. Choose a fourth point, also not collinear. For quicker and simpler results, set it outside the finite triangle of the three anchor points and draw the lines connecting it with the three anchor points. Choose a fifth point lying in one of these three lines and draw the lines connecting it with the other two anchor points. And now we play a simple game. Wherever two lines intersect, connect their intersection with the third anchor point. Here, for instance, we don't need to mark all the points. They clutter the view. What we're after are the lines. Rule. Every line must lie in one and only one of the three anchor points. Soon enough, if you work precisely, the lines start converging of their own accord, as if by magic. Here, for instance, to avoid gaps, Draw the new lines as close as possible to the old. See? It's easy. and so on. After a while, you should have something like this. There seem to be hidden laws without measurement. The lines gradually approach the infinitely distant invisible lines connecting the three anchor points. We'll come back to this, but first, let's polarize the whole construction. In other words, play the same game again with point and line interchanged. Pause if you know what that means and want to try it on your own. Choose three anchor lines not co-punctual. These three will be treated differently from all subsequent lines. Choose a fourth line, also not co-punctual. For quicker and simpler results, set it in the finite triangle of the three anchor lines and mark the points connecting it with the three anchor lines. Choose a fifth line, lying in one of these three points, and mark the points connecting it with the other two anchor lines. And now we play a simple game. Wherever two marked points can be connected, mark the intersection of their connector with the third anchor line. Here, for instance. We don't need to show all the lines. They clutter the view. What we're after are the points. Rule. 
every marked point must lie in one and only one of the three anchor lines. This last sequence shows that there are involutions all over the place here. In case you know what those are, we'll look at involutions some other time. Soon enough, if you work precisely, the points start lining up of their own accord, as if by magic. Here, for instance, Sometimes a point will change color on you if you don't watch out. You might want to fetch a new eraser. That will do for now. The points gradually approach the infinitely distant unmarked points connecting the three anchor lines. Still, the beauty of the pattern is not as evident as in the polar version. Patience. We return to the other construction and notice that the straight edge has generated some curves. These nodes marked in blue, for instance, plot a conic. This is what the whole curve looks like if you know how to construct a conic, which will be a topic coming soon in this series. The nodes you join to form the conic lie in successive lines of two of the anchor points. And these two anchor points themselves lie on the conic. Their tangent lines are the lines connecting them with the third anchor point. There are whole families of families to be found. These, for instance. And now it's time to revisit the polar construction and polarize what we have just done. Pause if you would like to try it on your own. Here too the straight edge has generated some curves. These connecting lines shown in blue, for instance, and sheath a conic. The lines you use to form the conic lie in successive points of two of the anchor lines. And these two anchor lines themselves lie on the conic. In other words, they are tangents. Their tangent points are where they intersect the third anchor line. There might be a couple more tangents, too. There they are. There are whole families of families to be found. Another hyperbola. You can let children make this kind of pattern with colored strings strung between nails in a board if you make sure the nails are placed correctly. This one is actually an ellipse. And so on.
the one anchor line and the intersection of the other two are polar and pole with respect to the whole range of conics in case you know what that means this too will be a topic for another time for now suffice it to say that the expression pole and polar is not to be confused with polarity as we have been using the term and here the one anchor point and the line connecting the other two are pole and polar with respect to the whole pencil of conics. Metrical properties abound in these constructions, yet the starting points and starting lines were freely chosen without measurement. Of course, they did stand at certain distances and angles, but those only determine the scaling and tilt of the resulting patterns. Vary the measurements, and the fundamental lawfulness remains the same. As you can see if you compare the pictures shown here with your own. It makes you wonder whether the assumption so widespread in the physical sciences today that the primary entities generating the world are essentially quantities might perhaps be an error.